So today, we're having a look at the Cinemachine Dolly Track. We created ourselves a track in which the camera just moves on and then we animate this thing. So it looks a little bit like that. When we play our game, the camera is going to take on that track, follow it, and as you can see, this animation is quite awful. <laughs> I didn't really did the track properly, but somebody that's good at placing these objects in the scene can probably do something quite awesome. So guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. To get started with Cinemachine, we need to install the package that goes with it. So, as we like to do, let's go under Window, Package Manager, and then beneath here, we can look for Cinemachine. So just go ahead, click on Install, and then you will have Cinemachine directly in your project, which will include the virtual camera, will include the dolly camera, will include the 2D camera, will include pretty much all type of camera you'd like to have for your project. Um, usually, I like to go with a custom solution that doesn't go with Cinemachine, but if I was to make something a little bit more uh, polish a little bit more quality a little bit more cinematics you would definitely want to go with cinema machine and not the lightweight solution so we have cinema machine in our project right now if we just go in any object and type in cine you'll be able to find quite a lot of new component now we don't want to be creating anything directly from here instead what we want to be doing is go on the top at the top over here there's a new option menu called cinema machine and then you get to create <laughs> All of these cameras, as you can see, there's quite a lot. The one we're interested in today is a dolly camera. So something that's gonna be following a dolly track. So in our case, we wanna be replacing the camera we currently have. So we'll do create a camera with a track. And here it is. The create a camera with a, a, a cart is basically you just create a track with an object you could follow around, but the camera with the track would be that object that you follow around. So I'm going to create on, um, click on create a new camera and you'll see right away we have some changes going on. Why is that happening? Well, our new virtual camera, this thing over here, is overriding the main camera. And why is that happening exactly? There's no camera component on this. Well, because on your main camera, they actually created a new component called the Cinemachine Brain, and the brain is gonna be the one that moves this camera around. Now, you know, your transform could be different, but it doesn't really matter. As you can see, if I move it around, I can't. I can't even move the transform because it's bound directly to my virtual camera. So if I wanna move my main camera right now, I have no choice but to move my virtual one. And by moving my virtual camera, the real camera follows. So that's a specification that you have to get used to. Now, on top of that, there is also the track. Um, so we have these two things we have to play around with in order to make a difference in our game. What are we gonna do first? I think we should have a look at the brain first on our main camera. On the fields we have access here on the right hand side, we can show the debug text, which is going to let you know, hey, which camera is being used right now? Or are we transitioning in between two different camera? That, that's useful in case you have multiple of those virtual cameras. So you go from a dolly track to a 2D camera. That is possible um, with the machine, and that will let you know which camera are influencing your position and your rotation right now. We won't need that. Um, show camera frost drum, you can see what it does right here. Ignore time scale, I wouldn't do that. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, world up override, that would depend if you have a different world up. In our case, you know, gravity is going down and up is going up. But if you were in like a tube and you were playing with all different axes, then that would have to be changed. And um, we have the smart update, the fixed update or late update. If you guys watch my videos, you know that I like to use late update all the time for camera, but I actually never had any issues with smart updates. So I think it's actually quite smart and it detects if the object you're looking at is moving before and then it moves after. So um, never had an issue with that. I'm still gonna go with late update, up to you though. And then you have default transition. Assuming you have multiple camera and you wanna switch in between them, how are you gonna be doing it exactly? This one does a easy in out over two, scan, two seconds, but um, that's also customizable by transition basis. So if you go from a 2D camera to a track camera, you can say, hey, if you go from 2D to track, take one second. But if you go from track to 2D, take five seconds. You have the option to do that right here on the brain. That's enough for a brain. Let's have a look at our virtual camera. So right now, a virtual camera is, well, what you're gonna be looking at most of the time in the machine is these three things down here. Um, how is it moving its body? Well, its body right now is bound on a dolly track. So that's how it moves. If this thing moves, it moves basically. As you can see, if we move the dolly track, we can also move the camera, but I think we can also have an offset. Yeah, so you can have a camera offset in your dolly track. So that's like two layers of things you can move. Um, but if we quickly go back on our camera 
and have a look here. Okay, you have a bad position, which means where exactly are you in your dolly track? We'll see that in a moment. And then we have a couple of different things you can play around. So you want to have an offset in our case, let's say no, let's just be directly on the track. Uh, you can do damping in case you don't want to move that fast left and right on the dolly track. But right now, the only issue is I want to show you these things, but we don't really have anything done with the dolly track. Like the most important thing in this setting is the path position. Where exactly are you on the track? Um, like what's your percentage done on the track? But right now there is no track, so it's really hard to say. Aim is where your rotation is going to be. Usually a look at target is required. So if you just want to look at something very specific, you can say, hey, um, whatever, wherever you're going to be in the map, just always be looking at this specific object. We could do that with the portal a little bit later. And then noise is if you want to do a little bit of shakiness, I, I, I think I'm not 100% sure. So let's put that on hold for a moment and go on our dolly track. I'm going to make my scene a little bit bigger and we're going to start laying down some waypoints. So if I move my dolly track around, say I want, I want to start around here and I'm taking the position I want with my scene while my camera is selected and I'm going to hit control shift and F, which just position my camera exactly where my view was. You can also go under game object. You'll find it over here. So align with view. So when you start laying down waypoints, you're going to realize that this thing is actually hard to work with. Like, sure, we placed our main object over here, but as soon as we create a waypoint, it goes in like weird direction and it just keeps going places you don't really want. Now, if you want to overwrite something, you can try and press Control Shift F, but it's going to move the whole thing. I don't even know where they are. Here they are. So that's not really fun to play around with. So I recommend instead of doing what I said a minute ago, um, I recommend that you just go ahead and uh, place them manually using the scene, which is going to be a hustle, but I mean, we have to do it. Um, so here's what I'll do. I get my first waypoint. This one, I'll stack it directly on top, and then we'll move on to the second one. With the second one, you'll start being able to see this thing, which is the track. And we can start going around and just modifying this as much as we want. So let's go ahead, take our third point, try to select it. If you don't see it, press on W so you can re-enable uh, the uh, this view. And I'm going to go ahead, switch myself to scene view or global view so I can go down directly like this. And we're going to start curving into the portal. Just like a roller coaster. Okay, so do we get something that makes a little bit of sense? You have to go in three dimension and actually look because you'll probably miss your target a couple of times. Like I'm quite down there right now, which is not what I wanted. But hey, like this is good. Now remember, there's like a rotation going on with this thing. As you can see, it's not completely straight. Um, but the rotation is controlled by your look at target. So whatever happens, you know, you're taking the right position at least. And then for the rotation, we'll find it out in time. Okay. So we have our track, very simple track. Now, if we want to animate this, we go under the body. We're under the camera right now. We go under the body and we go in the path position and start playing it as you can see. Now, every time you have a waypoint, you're going to end up on the one. If I press on the one over here, over here, I know that there is a waypoint. Two, there's a waypoint over there as well. Three, waypoint there. And then four, that's the end of the track because there's a total of four waypoints. What you can also do is go beneath that in the auto dolly, but this is not what you think it is. It's not simply going to play the thing. It's going to follow a target around in the scene. So assuming you have a player that's, that's able to run down like on the floor over here, this auto dolly is going to make sure we follow it as close as we can. So if your player is on the right hand side over here, it's going to cast a ray and find the nearest point on this dolly track and the camera is going to go right over there. So for this one, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because if we go like straight beneath it, it's going to snap there, then it's going to snap here. It's going to be quite, quite annoying. So instead, what we have to do is actually animate this path position. Now, one thing before we do, we should go ahead and create a look at target. So I'll go ahead and do that right away. This is going to be my look at. I'll actually just place a point in 3D space, which is like going to be right around there. Um, there might be a small glitch if I put it before the track ends. So here, I'm going to put it there. And this is what we'll be looking at. Going back on my camera, I'll drag and drop my look at target. And then if you have a look on the right hand side, which is going to be, this is what, we, what you'll be able to see in the scene. 
um, and we go ahead and we move our path position, we keep looking at that point and then we enter the portal using our nice track. And that's really all there is to it. The next step is to animate this thing, which is gonna be quite a pain because you have so many choices to take from. Um, but this is mostly what you want. So here's a preview of what could be happening in the game without damping. So from zero to four without damping, of course, way too fast. Let's go ahead and add some, some damping, just say one, one, one. And we go over here, press and full. Oh, we have something that's much smoother already with just one of damping. What if we put that on say five? And we have something much more smooth. In fact, that could be our animation right there. Also, something I wanted to show you quickly before we go in and animate that is I have a small offset. Like I don't directly go directly in the center of the portal and that's what I'd like to do. I'm currently in play mode, but we can still go ahead and edit this. So we can still make sure we can move this like a little bit more in the center. It's doable in um, play mode and it's going to be reflected outside of play mode, which is one of the thing I like about Cinema Machine. So here we are a little bit closer to the center. We could move that even more and say, we could be looking at this target from around here and then play. And we'd go about in the center of this thing. So it's a little bit better to look at in this case. Plus we get our post-processing from um, previous episode, which kicks in and okay. So I'm satisfied with this. I can now stop playing the game. Just put back my, my values over here, my damping values. So I was at full and say one, one. And that's something I, I like quite a lot. Moving on, how do we edit this thing? Well, on our camera right here, we could simply be creating a new animation. Of course, if you wanna have animation, you're going to need a animator controller. So let's just say portal scene camera. And I'm going to drag and drop this thing directly on my object. And then from that point on, we can open up the animator. So animation, animation like this actually. And when we have our object selected, like we have right now, we can create a new animation, call it the dolly animation. And I'll put that in the right folder, which is getting, <laughs> this project is getting, getting quite populated right now. Um, but having that said, we have our object down here. Let's go ahead and record. At the very first moment, at the very first frame, I want my path position to be zero. And say after a full, a full second, which is not gonna be that long, we could want our path position to be four. And just like that, we've created our animation. There's nothing more simple than creating animation with Mechanium. It's a little bit cumbersome though, because you have now a animator and you now have a animation as well, um, you know, these two things, but they get the job done quite well. And when, when you start playing the game right now, say maximize on play, you don't have to click anything and you have your weird animation. What the hell am I doing? Oh, I'm trying to loop right now, that's why. <laughs> That's why, what, that's what's happening, my bad. Um, so under Dolly Animation, the one I just chosen, I'm going to remove my loop. It, it tried just putting back the value zero and then one. That's why it's quite, uh, quite messy. But here it is. That's our very crappy animation done very fast using Cinemachine Dolly and also the post-processing stack from previous episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This was actually the last video of Monk Much, but we still have a couple of things to cover. Um, so they won't be coming tomorrow. There's not gonna be a tutorial video tomorrow. However, we made it through Monk Much and we still have things to go through before I can go ahead and like make full games in front of you using those package. Um, speaking of which, there is no package today because we're using paid assets from the UT Asset Store. I don't think this one is too hard to reproduce and it's really custom to you. So I invite you to do that, test it out on your end and uh, come on Discord, show us the result, show us the progress of your game, show us whatever you're working on. Once more, thank you so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow maybe, with a bonus video. <laughs> Alright, catch you then. Peace.